How do you see the Indian healthcare sector advancing in terms of technology adoption? With multiple innovations taking shape, which according to you will impact the healthcare industry most? When we talk of first the healthcare evolution and then Indian healthcare technology evolution, I, I'll kind of you know break this into two parts. Uh, and I'll keep focused on healthcare, which is probably uh, our focus area here. Uh, we are a huge country and the demand on healthcare is huge. Accessibility is a necessary need and having the care provided in an affordable manner is a necessary need. And being careful about affordable, affordable does not equate to free or subsidized. There is a format by which it is rightly uh, priced. And above all of this, ensuring that quality of the healthcare and the outcomes of that healthcare that is provided has to be to the best and the best of standards because that is the straight expectation out of any consumer. Uh, here, probably in the 1970s and the early uh, and the 1980s, there used to be this notion of if there is uh, tertiary healthcare or advanced healthcare needed, you need to, to go abroad. And such like healthcare will be only available outside India. Ever since the 1990s, that view has diminished. And today I would feel very, very confident saying that view is almost gone or even does not exist. You rarely hear anybody saying that some care is not available in India for which they have to go outside India to provide care at a at, at some reasonable scale. So that's really the landscape of uh, how healthcare has evolved. Now, the problem statement is actually the, uh, or the opportunity is the problem statement also. Uh, how do we provide healthcare to this quantum of people? How do we ensure that all of this is monitored? How do we ensure that it is accessible? How do we ensure that it is affordable? How do we ensure quality? Uh, how do we ensure that there is governance through the process? All of this is there to do well as it relates to various aspects of technology. So. How do we deploy this technology to partner with the, the brick and mortar health systems? And how do we solve this uh, presentation of opportunity of providing healthcare to us? So given this sort of a framework and a setting, I clearly see that everybody understands the need for why we should have technology, the need for the scale of it. People are in various maturity levels of deploying it, getting that return on investment, getting that outcome measured. So it's a varied level of maturity. So it's uh, absolutely unfair for me to say that, you know, we have deployed technology and healthcare in India is, uh, is in a steady state. No, no, no. We are in an early stage, definitely. But we are in a very promising and early stage and in an aggressively growing period. And we are growing with disruptive maturity. So we are, we are learning from all the activities that have happened across the world and we are executing it with a great sense of innovation and a very, very important responsibility of ensuring quality and uh, staying outcomes are never, never compromised. So I think in that aspect, I would feel very, very upbeat about how technology is being used, is being projected to be used. And here, when I talk about all that, these are not use cases. This is not a theory of how it could be done. This is about actual execution at scale. The scale is important. It is not important to all of, or for all of us to agree on a concept of a potential usage. Here, India today is starting to consume at scale. We have a long way to go. Like I said, we are in the very early stages, but we are in a in a good mature position of the early stage with solid innovation going into it so that it can give us a little bit of a jump start and a, a, a kind of a, of a boost and not a gradual growth period. So I definitely see India uh, racing ahead uh, as it is looking at providing healthcare to everybody by strong enablement of technology, mature technology at size and scale, and obviously cost and quality.
Extracting the healthcare data from different sources has been a real challenge for the industry. How can the data from different sources be extracted and channelized for diagnostic accuracy? I think the biggest problem we are all battling with is uh, regulation and guidelines. Uh, when I say regulation and guidelines, I also want to add to it uh, the lack of a solid monitoring and governing uh, statutory structure. So by doing so, by not having this, and when I say not having this, not having this in a very uh, firm manner, uh, I don't want to argue that something doesn't exist today. Yes, it does exist today, but it exists in a softer format that is not uh, binding. So I'm looking, that's why I said statutory governance that's binding. Uh, by doing so, it causes, definitely it opens up issues of privacy. It opens up issues of violation. It opens up issues of misuse. It opens up issues of unethical usage. And uh, these have to be acknowledged. These have to be acknowledged, and which is why we need a structure, a governance, a binding statutory governance, binding structure to ensure that all of this is not there. And the reason for that is what this data can do when it is analyzed and brought back into insights at point of care can be phenomenal, can be phenomenal. And it can add immense value to speed to diagnosis because one you're looking at the presentation of complaints by the corresponding patient plus you are able to analyze a logical cohort relevant cohort so that you are able to have some sort of an additional insight on potential diagnosis and treatment patterns this means speed to diagnosis and the moment you get speed to diagnosis you have a person, a patient being put on a good treatment plan. That means that there is going to be a faster way by which they can get well from the presentation of the complaints or the diagnosis or whatever uh, disease that they are suffering from. They can be put into a quicker regime of treatment. And by putting somebody into a quicker regime of treatment, you obviously have the benefit of catching the problem early and thereby solving or reducing or mitigating, eliminating whichever uh, manner in which that disease is presenting, you have a much more stronger opportunity to do that. So it provides immense opportunity. What are the use cases for this? There are some tremendous use cases. You look at, so this I spoke to you in terms of insights at point of care. Now insights at the cohort population level, you can have immense population analytics on, pa on patterns prediction so that you can keep a nation genuinely wealthy sorry healthy <clears throat> genuinely healthy and literally i'm saying this is if i can explore the word ayushman this is what we are looking for ayushman where the entire population is healthy and contributing effectively to the economy and not becoming a burden to the economy and when I say this, I'm not only talking about outbreaks of diseases. I'm not talking of pandemics. I'm also talking of non-communicable diseases that can hit India in a big manner because of the nature and the habits and the genetic disposition of India. We are very, very susceptible to cardiovascular diseases as a population. We are very susceptible to diabetes. We are very susceptible to cancer. We are very susceptible to uh, sting, uh, 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 hypertension and, uh, and uh, problems on the liver. This I'm talking of us as a genetic uh, structure in this part of the world with our habits, with our culture. So many things put into it is what we, that, that this is not predict bad news at all. This is where when we have this data, we can start getting to people with uh, interventions. I won't even call it treatment. I will call it interventions. And now you're going to have a much more healthier population segment. And this population segment well monitored because this data is constantly educating and getting learned and thereby throwing insights that can be analyzed and thereby action state. Although the healthcare industry is developing mobile strategies, the complexity of integration and implementation remains a challenge. 
How are you handling this situation for Apollo? Two very straight uh, responses to that. One is always an integrated approach that does not compromise the enterprise, that does not compromise the longitudinal record of the patient, that does not compromise the treatment pattern. That is one aspect. The second aspect is deploying the right technology in the right position. So it is not about are you doing a mobile strategy? I don't see it that way. It is about are we deploying the right device and technology strategy for the right workflow. So the same activity workflow in a certain construct can be done on the mobile and the second construct can be done on the regular traditional desktop uh, 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 thing, uh, environment. So it is about the user using a device and a technology that enables them constructively to effectively perform their workflow without compromising integrity, without compromising quality, without compromising patient care, and without losing operation efficiency for an organization without causing financial overhead that could be eliminated. So all of this has to be looked at. So it is not to look at mobile as an isolated strategy automatically ensures or brings to light the need to have the network between the mobile network and the regular uh, network of the organization, the enterprise network, to be tightly coupled and talking to each other and well protected from a cyber security uh, perspective, well protected to ensure that there are no network losses that cause inefficiency of the telecom transmission because that could hurt the potential delivery of care. So all of this will have to come together and that's kind of how you look at the mobile, not to just look at mobile as uh, as an isolated activity. Uh, this uh, has to be seen as an overall enterprise and you have to look at it from both sides. The patient side of it, when they are not inside the health system, how mobile can be effective and it can be very, very effective, very, very effective. And how you can use it inside the health system when they are in direct you know, care. So both the direct care and indirect care, you'll have to look at all aspects of it. You have to take into consideration the expertise and the comfort of various people on devices. Mobile definitely provides lots and lots of benefits. And with the mobile revolution, now almost everybody has gotten comfortable with it. We've crossed a little barrier of, uh, of not knowing how to use, but still it does exist. You have to just bring all of this together and deal with each and ensure that you have a composite strategy and not an isolated mobile strategy. But definitely mobile provides significant benefits in this. Integrating different healthcare devices to generate a unified view is the need of the hour. How can patient information be connected across an entire digital ecosystem? Definitely an area where I don't think uh, we are performing to our best of potential and abilities. You have a lot of devices. These devices today are working in isolation. The need to have these devices connected definitely increases operational efficiency. The need to have these devices connected definitely increases and ensures that patient care, patient safety, and patient quality is never, never compromised. But most importantly, the need to have these devices connected so that the information that each device for the purpose in which it is used is correlated with the other information and presented as a longitudinal view of the state of health, either in that episodic manner or in a longitudinal manner is extremely important. Otherwise, you have to take reading number one, reading number two, reading number three, and start forming a, a mental map of how they how and what they mean to each other or not. And that's because they all exist in isolation. So that is where that entire strategy of connected devices to ensure that it is working towards the goal of the treatment pattern is very, very important for which standards of such like transmission, be it HL7 or FIRE or DICOM, there are so many standards that are used. 
using standardized vocabulary like snowmed or loin or such like standardized that help the talking of such like transactions from each device to be aggregated to present a single view in a, a longitudinal manner keeping the patient as the center of our problem statement and ensuring that we are effectively enabling that i think that's an area where people are working very very early stages it would not be unfair for me to say, uh, say that today everything is working in isolation and we have limited uh, connected activities limited uh, but at the same time i'm feeling very comfortable to say that this problem statement is well understood and you don't need to articulate this as a problem statement to people people are today figuring out how to do it how to get it done nobody is asking why to do it but they are only figuring out how to do it there are several technical ways of doing it and all of that we are in the early stages but uh, today this is an area where we can do lot lot better good potential to do in this area this is an area where we can enforce standards of uh, communication protocol standards of terminologies vocabulary standardization all of that can be done thereby interoperability not only across devices but across health systems will also be a genuine uh, goal that we can reach in a tangible manner